Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Pipeline Authoring SIG. This is January 31st, and this is uh, the revitalization of this uh, SIG. And uh, I'm Marky. Everybody else is on the line. I think we all pretty much know each other. But for anybody watching this recording, we meet uh, weekly. It is on the community calendar. Uh, we do post a link to the meeting notes in the pipeline authoring SIG Gitter channel. So we welcome you to join. Welcome everybody. Happy Friday. Yay. We made it barely. <laughs> Some of us are just struggling to get over the finish line. I myself am one of them. All right, let me see. Oh, and man. I will look, oh, you want to go ahead and share? I can, I can be the one uh, driving at least trying to. Yeah, so. beautiful. Uh, what I do ask is, uh, can we get a note taker? That's me. That's what I mean. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. Perfect. 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 I'm gonna shut up then. Up here, Marky. Do, do put myself at top. Ha ha. No. Um. You are the leader. Put yourself on top. Uh, whatever. All right. So, um, last time we were talking about. What we wanted to do, we wanted to discuss. We were sort of spinning back up some of the old notes and getting sort of trying to figure out. Where's, and I think we're still going to be doing this this time. Um, what we want to do. Um, these were the open tasks. Um, I don't know, if, Marky. I felt like you had the. Actually, you and Stephen both had much larger um, tasks to do um, in terms of. Uh, what to do this time. So you did, did you get around to creating a persona doc or? I did not create the persona doc. Uh, so we'll just publicly. Into... I have it privately set up. Okay. I will have it ready for public consumption by the end of today. Okie dokie. And I will uh, share that link in the getter channel to that document. All right. Let's see. All right, so old business. <laughs> uh, and Stephen, how about you? Did you start thinking about this? Do you have something to talk about to sort of show us? Uh, I definitely started thinking about it. I didn't create any artifacts for it. Okay. Um, I think it, that action item ties into what we were talking about last time with the charter and talking about sort of high level grandiose visions. Um, so yeah, I certainly have things to say, but I think it's probably gonna be a lot of the recap of what we talked about last time. We have a new perspective on the call today, so I'd be interested to hear yeah. some of Jeff's yeah. thoughts too. Yeah, so, um, um, yeah, so if, if, I, I'm hearing the Go echo ahead. again. So, so if I understand correctly, I, I think this may be actually something I've thought a lot about. Um, one, one of the problems that I'm running into in the workplace is, uh, although the company has spent a, a lot of time and expertise learning Jenkins, and, and in particular, I've, I've you know spent time becoming a contributor, people think that writing pipelines is hard. And so they're talking about moving to things like Circle CI or Travis CI, just because I think Jenkins is hard. And um, for, first of all, I mean, my, my first thing is, okay, so you're trading one set of problems for another. But the other, the other thing is, um, I get asked to help a lot on, on pipelines. And a, a, a lot of the pro things people are complaining about are of their own making. They, they create like these monstrous, um, you know, multi-level um, uh, uh, li libraries and things that are hard to understand. Um, people leave and nobody knows how to work them. So I've, I've been trying to think of ways to guide people to making that easier. Is, is that kind of um, under the charter of this group or am I mis misinterpreting? No, I think that that's fair in, the, here, in this. Um, absolutely. So, um, yeah, no, that's exactly what we're, and it's part of, partly we're trying to figure out what our charter is and how much, 
how much we want to take on, but that sounds square in the middle of, yeah, you know, how do we, how do we make it easier? Right. So, so my, my personal thing is to, to, to make it um, less likely that people will want to leave Jenkins just because they perceive it as harder than it is. Um, right. And I think we're talking, I mentioned last time, one of my things is like, Hey, can we, like we need to make the, the, that on ramp smoother so that people don't think yeah. Jenkins is, is hard. Now the weird thing is, is now, I don't know if you've seen this happen, but like, I find that like, yes, circle CI is like, Oh, it's super easy. And then they start trying to do things and they can't. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the issue is that we sort of, as, as Jenkins as a whole sort of throws all the complexity at you at, at once. Um, and so you end up feeling like it's harder than, than the other thing. But the other thing is just as hard once you try to do the thing that you're trying to do. Right? Yeah. 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 It's like not a level uh, graph when you talk about complexity to ease, right? With Jenkins, it gets easier as you're applying, you have more complex situations and that's where Jenkins starts to shine, right? Circle mm -hmm. CI or Travis might be ideal if your pipeline is run one command or something. But the second you need to start interacting with external resources or dealing with you know, multi-component applications, that's when Jenkins starts to really shine. So that, that yeah. on-ramp that, yeah. that we talked about last time, like digging into that a little bit, I'd be curious what you think the sort of the beginner level steps to that on-ramp are. Like what's the most basic pipeline you could introduce someone to to show them how Jenkins works and what are the step functions to build up that complexity? Right. Uh -huh. I think a lot of the time, I think a lot of the time the challenge is that people don't have a good mental model for how Jenkins works or how pipelines work. So when you throw them into it at the beginning, they sort of feel like they have to know how to code and they have to understand mm -hmm. what steps are available and how to figure out the syntax for them. And there's, there's all these challenges. So it, it's really about like, how do we help them build that mental model? And then what are the steps in complexity to introduce people to in what order mm -hmm. so that they, they gradually get more familiar with it. So what, one of the suggestions that one of my old, old managers had that he thought would, would make Jenkins easier is if, if there was a, a, a set of, um, of samples for building different types of things, and, and, and may, maybe there is, but like, like if you could go somewhere to a repository or some documentation and it says, okay, if you want to, to build an NPM project, here's what you do. If you want to build a Go project, here's what you do. If you want to build Java, here's what you do. And as a starting point, um, he, he felt like Travis in particular does a good job with that. And um, I, I did, when, 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 I, when I looked at, at, at Travis, um, they, they did seem to have a, a lot of documentation, you know, around how to just do basic things. Um, I know there's a, uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Marky. I know that in the other SIG, especially the docs SIG, they're doing a lot of work in refining uh, the docs are, how the docs are laid out. Uh, one of the examples you gave, for example, uh, was a, like NPM, how to build a, simple, a sample NPM project. And there is an actual documentation on how to do that. I think what happens is most users will come in at a beginning level and do these beginning sample steps, but quickly go to intermediate. And there's no good handoff documentation wise to show how to go from beginner to intermediate. Okay, great. I can now set up, you know, a basic NPM project, but now how do I add things to that project? There's no good way to, to do that handoff. And I find, especially in a lot of the questions that get asked in Getter, that's what's happening. Like, oh, okay, I followed this, but now I need to do this. And then that, and I think, I think everybody kind of knows what specific example I'm using, but what would you say to that, Wayne? Uh, sorry, I was laughing because uh, I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, this happens all the time. Uh, so you have the on-ramp and it's basically just like the, like the movie Speed, right? Here's the on-ramp. Oh, it's missing this middle section. You have to jump the bus across and who knows how you do that, right? Well, well, well played. Well yeah, played. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, I think, you'll, you'll, I you'll see me laughing like that all the time. <laughs> so. I mean, so I I've had to write a lot of learning labs for various frameworks I help maintain, and what I'm what I'm finding is that 
people will walk step by step through documentation to get something minimal working without pausing to understand the steps of what's going on, right? And then they get to an end of it and they have something that works, but they they didn't actually learn the the basics that the documentation was trying to teach you, right? So whenever you have copy and pasteable working examples, people copy and paste. So maybe it involves restructuring the docs so that you explain the step in a syntax. Maybe you hide the end result of what's going to get copied and pasted and encourage people to actually build it themselves with a fallback of, if you're stuck, here's the working solution. But if someone sees something they can copy and paste, they're going to copy and paste it and then figure out how to modify that, right? Which speaks to the fact that people are struggling to build mental models because they don't understand yet how all the pieces they copied are, are actually working together. I'm wondering Dude, if I'm, it makes sense in future meetings to actually maybe skip, like maybe do one meeting a month where we do like a walkthrough and encourage people to come like, hey, we're going to show you how to build a go, you know, job and a pipeline. And, and I bet you we would get a lot of people that would, would come to that. Um, we should we could even do that as a that I think I like that idea. I think we should maybe this group can sort of do that a little bit. I don't know that we're trying to get a ton of people into into the SIG meetings exactly. I think that would be something that we, that we would sort of like. Okay, let's run through this together and see how that works, um, and then have one of us go to the like go do a. Uh, sorry, Jenkins Online Meetup or something where you actually have, the, and then run through that again, right? For a larger just audience, here's here's the example, right? Yeah, um, I like But that. having having this group's like be uh, part of uh, part of the uh, the engine that generates the 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 docs that we're talking about seems great to me. And yes, having a uh, and yes, having a, uh, a video would be great. I think it'd be really interesting to find someone that's looking for that help and have them go through it with us sort of watching. Like I, I would want to see mm. what approaches are they taking to doing it and where are they getting stuck, right? If we're talking about this from like a user centered design perspective and we want to do interviews with our stakeholders, like we're almost too familiar with it to, to know what, what knowledge we take for granted. Right, so seeing a beginner try to work through it would probably show us a lot more about what the challenges actually are. That's a, a really good idea, right? And 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 you, you're you're exactly right. I mean, I I've been using Jenkins for so much that I I I probably can no longer judge what's hard about it, right? I, I just know that people find it hard, and that 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 would be great data. I'm also wondering, uh, I know one of the things that we talked about in our last meeting, which would be good towards personas and the charter is to get a survey out and to really start to put a, get a pulse on what the community is, is having. And, and you know what, I'll tell you what, you could put an action item for me. I will draft up a survey and then I'll, I'll give it to the, to the team to look at and and we can see, you know, what's good and send something out. I think that will be really good too, to start getting the pulse on the community. I, I, I like that, that idea. Um, I, I, I want to kind of drill in um, do, do, to the specific information we want to get from it. Do, do you like, like um, what, what parts of Jenkins are hard? Or, well, I, what, are, what are your thoughts? I, well, I, I, want, I would like the survey to be centered around pipeline and sp okay. specifically using yeah. the pipeline because uh, at least one of the goals that I have for this SIG is to start to be able to generate items that people are able to use and, and find value. And, and that's something mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, help author for them. So I, I would love to be able to have data to know that we're working in the right direction and not just it's for people who know Jenkins really well. We take advantage of some of the things that we find hard that other people may find that's completely out of the realm of my thought. Okay. Uh, 
and so that that's something we would would post um where, where would we post that the like the dev list or um so that's a good point i mean the, the, we've had surveys for jenkins as a whole and the one of the general things with jenkins is, is that the the vast majority of users are silent mm -hmm. there and there isn't really an easy way to engage with them so mm -hmm. um Yeah, yeah like if we sure. had to break down a pie chart of of the challenges that people are hitting, how frequently is it that they misunderstood the pipeline syntax versus an infrastructure related problem of they're trying to do something with node, but their build agent doesn't have node installed or like in my experience, a lot of the challenges people run into are more platform related than actual pipeline code related. Uh, have you guys had the, a similar experience? So I, I kind of, I see two things. Um, I, I, I do see that a lot. I mean, people are like, oh, Jenkins is broken. And you look at it, well, Jenkins just runs tasks. No, Jenkins isn't broken. You're, you're misconfigured. The other thing I see is people not really understanding um, all of the things that Jenkins has to offer. Like I, I see people, instead of using credentials, they, they have an environment variable that has a user and password in it and their jobs. They just, they just don't know that credentials exist. Um, oh. they, they, they write code to make, make rest calls to Slack because they don't know the Slack plugin exists or they, they don't, or, or they, they just like, they build infrastructure around sending Slack messages when the plugin can can do that. Those, those are just a couple of examples. I've, I've been collecting them. Um, I, I, somebody was like using curl to to do rest things because they didn't know that there was a plugin that lets. So, so a lot of it's just people just not knowing what's available. And I, I, I don't know either. But when I want to do something new, the first place I, I look is the the plugins. <laughs> the plugin site so just people as a just, maintainer uh, as a maintainer of plugins i have a love-hate relationship with plugins uh-huh yeah <laughs> and 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 to touch on what you're talking about jeff the the reason that, that i do is i find and especially with your slack example you gave because i've had this happen uh-huh there's a reliance on a plugin and i think a lot of people don't understand that that plugin is maintained by volunteers. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that means it may not be up to date. So I have found that in my personal professional dealings that I like to write something out code wise and not rely on a plugin every time, mainly because if the plugin fails for some reason and people have gotten used to the functionality I need to be able to give that back to them and I have to go, have not have to go read, you know, write code for that plugin. So a good example would be, you know, a durable task and, and how that sometimes breaks the Docker agent. So using a Docker file. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the, the 1.33 version has fixed that, but in the 1.32, I had a full community that could not use agent Docker file. Ooh. Uh-huh. And so now they had to resort back to using native Docker commands in their Jenkins file. Gotcha. To, to watch the complexity of people that were just struggling to write these things natively because they had relied on a plugin for so long and it was doing these things for them under the hood was a real good uh, lesson for me to say, well, plugins are great. We also have to make sure our community understands how to not use a plugin because there may be a time that they need to do that. Did that make any sense? What I said? Oh yeah, no. I, as a yeah. Jenkins, as someone who's who's maintained uh, a Jenkins and since for a team like that, that's exactly the same philosophy that I ended up with. Where it was like, okay, I could do this with the plugin, but <laughs> I might you know, because of where we're at, I, I'm not going to because I need this feature or the, like, I need, I need people to actually know how this works. So, or I need to know how I need to have more control over it. Right. I had a conversation with you this week, Liam, about oh, yeah. something where I was like, I could use a plugin to do this and I might be able to, but if that goes south, I have to be able to know how to do this natively without that plugin. Yeah, but but part part of it too is not not just the fact that they're 
that they're doing it outside of the plugin. But if you if you set programmers that know a little bit of Groovy to the task, they, they just create these these monstrous hierarchies of, of infrastructure around something that could be one line. Um, I, I could probably find some examples, but oh, it, yeah, but, but again, it just it just goes back to people making it harder than it needs to be. They're over engineering. Well, that goes also to It'd be an uh, interesting channel. Go, go right, ahead. It'd be I, an interesting channel to do like uh, sig oops. Like we find those examples and we walk through how to <laughs> uh, maybe refactor it to be a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah. I'm still going to start using that hashtag Sick. now. Sig oops. Sig oops. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if that, do, that domain's available. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is because it basically looks like a, a, a typo, right? So going back to the charter and the personas okay. and thoughts about doing something like that. I think before we can do a charter, we have to have the personas because the charter has got to be based on that. Okay. Did, did you guys discuss last time, um, like how many personas you want and what sort of what, what different levels they'd be? Or is that Not, still? That's still open partly because I think, uh, at least for my part, I, I basically wanted, I was waiting. I figured Mark, you could do a bunch of work and then I could just come in and just <laughs> be super mean about it and I like uh, it. <laughs> yeah that's nice work man we're just gonna ah, I, um so uh no but I, I i kind of like i i work better when someone else sort of says uh here like even even a, a slap on a slap the paint on the wall kind of thing and then we can kind of uh discuss from there uh that was my that was my intent no i think it's a good one i will have the personas the initial draft of personas published today Okay, and great. Can, I mean, like, and I'll have and, it in a document. Yeah, and even if you even if you, you don't feel like it's in great shape, it's it's better to just have something that we can sort of uh, play around with. Right? Agreed. Agreed. That'll be out today. Okay. I won't even worry about putting that on here. That's the thing. I put that in here. No, I started to write it and didn't get to it. Okay. Actually, no. It's in there. It is. Cool. Um, so, and I think those personas are probably also will also tune what we'll want to do for survey questions, right? Agreed. Can you also change the persona owner to me? Uh, oops. Sigoops. Yeah. By the way, sigoops.com is available. It can be yours for eleven ninety nine in the first year. <laughs> All righty. Oh. I'll pass though. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else? Uh, so, just as long as we're chatting. Um, so, Jeff, you're talking about the the sort of the crazy, gro groovy things. This is one example of of. I wonder whether or not moving moving, not moving, but basically providing people with a YAML version of the, the, the declarative syntax would, would make them think more in terms of, think less in terms of it being groovy. But I don't know that that would help because we're still, we still have shared libraries where it's like, oh, you can do this thing. And it's like, uh. um, it, 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 it could. I mean, I, I was actually hoping that declarative would, would solve some of these problems. But unfortunately, it, it, it doesn't really because you're still able to do fancy things in it with scripted and but but yeah putting it in yaml maybe well the yaml would make people really think about it as not groovy right um yeah maybe yeah maybe the i'm not taking notes of this but maybe the other thing that might be interesting to do is um so we have shared libraries and people aren't clear that they occur on that they run on your master and they, they take up resources there. Um, most of what people do in that context is, could be done anywhere, right? Like if you're talking about, hey, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna write myself a Slack step, right? Um, there's no need 
for for that to happen on master. It could happen anywhere, right? As long as you as long as you pass the right information, um, then 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 you're fine. Is that fair? So so I didn't actually know that. So every all, all code in a shared library runs on the master. Yep. Oh. Um, everything that's not in a specifically in a step um, mm. that or especially in a step that that is that is designed to run on the agent is running on master. Okay. It's running in a sandbox on master, but it's running. It's that's why we have the the security plugins and all these some of these other things where it's like you you in order to sandbox this work you have to do all this work to get it to. Um, sort of be able to run in process, but not have access to everything. What, 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 what sort of ties into the idea? Uh, I was just gonna say that kind of ties into the idea of like a static code analysis for your pipelines, which would be a pretty uh, easy, it's not never the right word, but yeah. a simpler check than others to see if it's encapsulated within a node block. Um, that gets well, harder yeah. when you have like distributed files, right? And now it's, you don't know where that method's being called from or, right. well, or but, something but like that. Actually, maybe you're not clear on this. Just because you're inside a node block doesn't mean your code is running on the, on, on the agent. That's fair. What, 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 um, what, prevents, it from, there, what prevents it from running on the agent though? I, I want to make sure I understand this. There's nothing that specifically prevents it, but the mm, historically maybe is the way to, say this, uh, the way that, that people have treated this is that like, oh, so I'm running this code, so I have access to, for instance, credentials and all these other things, right? All the things that are in, that are on the Jenkins master, including like, oh, hey, what other jobs are running? Or if I need to do this thing or that thing or, or a bunch of environment, a bunch of context from Jenkins, right? Most of the time people don't think about it or like, what, I've, what I'm sure you've seen, people do some insane, you know, for loop crazy stuff inside of their, inside of a node block and they think, mm -hmm. well, obviously that's running on the node. It's like, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not running on the agent, it's running in master. And you're just doing a bunch of work while you're holding on to your agent. <laughs> <laughs> the worst of all possible worlds. <laughs> exactly. So there's nothing, there's nothing that specifically stops it except for the hundred million gotchas um, mm -hmm. that, that about around assumptions, right? Ab about like, oh, I'm going to run this thing and I expect that this variable that I, that I declared at the, at the top of my pipeline is going to be there. Well, it wouldn't be there if it was running on, on the agent, unless we okay. do some, some degree of marshalling and there's a bunch of other work there, right? But, but you can have shared Groovy that exposes a, a step. Like I'm thinking about the, the build, the build plugin step that, that we use to, to build our plugins. Does, does that actually end up running on the agent? It must. It, it, it basically, it's a step that returns a pipeline. I'm not sure. Um, so some of it has to, because it, it runs on, like it does a windows build and a Linux build. So the build, so. Are, you're talking about a build step? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, the Jenkins file for most of the plugins just has one, um, like, like like one line in it that says "build build plugin." I think it is. Oh, okay. So that's not a step though. That's that's a shared library that calls that is still running on master. Um, eventually, there's like that, that that turn. Okay, if I want, if you want, I could go pull that up. But basically, that that is that's a shared library method that gets called, and then uh -huh. that runs some some code and eventually that calls some steps that do like something on agents. Right. But, okay. Um, maybe it's worth, uh, it's worth, uh am, am, am I, we might um, be getting a little far in the, the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I well, think we might uh, so be. my, 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 so the, the reason why I'm uh, the reason why I was, what I was going for here was like most of the stuff that you think is running on the agent is not. And, okay. if, and some of the, insanity that we could we might be able to address some of that insanity by saying okay everything inside this block is going to be run on the agent and that or or something right and it doesn't have to be groovy right <laughs> um in fact specifically saying we're not going to do it in groovy we're going to say it you know anything inside here goes onto an agent and have some way of transferring you know 
the little bit of data that people usually want between those two things. Maybe this is too far afield, but it, it's, I guess I, you're, you're talking about crazy groovy scripts and got me thinking about, yeah, we, we sort so this of, is again, kind of a, we guide people off advanced. the end of that odd ramp. <laughs> so I, I can, I can give you a, a, another example of, of crazy groovy libraries. So I, I was um, re reverse engineering um, a pipeline that one of our mobile apps w w uses that it wasn't working. It uses a bunch of shared libraries and I started like digging into it and I found something several layers in that uploaded, um, code coverage to a confluence page for another app. <laughs> so, so every time you ran any, any Android build or iOS build that, that used these shares, li shared libraries, it would contribute code coverage to a specific app, even though it was a different app. And th that, that happened because the, the team that owned the app that was doing code coverage, they said, oh, well, we'll put it in the shared library, even though that that's, oh, that was used by everybody. And it happened because I think somebody copied their pipeline. It's like, oh, this is working. I'll just copy this pipeline. Um, and so that, that, that's kind of the, the sorts of things that, that I mean with these like, like crazy groovy libraries. It's just, you, you just, I've seen cases where you just don't know what's going on unless you dig into it, which takes a lot of time. And I'm, I, I want to encourage people not to do that. So that, that might be outside of the scope of this group. Might, might just be my, my, my personal. <laughs> well, maybe, but I mean, this, it goes to the heart of the problem, at least one of the mm -hmm. problems that you're, you're talking about is being hard to use and then also like how it, what can we do to make it so that people know that there's a better way yeah right? it, i guess the source of the problem was that people were copying this pipeline because they thought jenkins was hard to use so, so i'll just copy this working pipeline and, with, and they didn't understand what it was doing so so maybe that becomes one of the personas you know <laughs> i i do not know i know this sounds <laughs> This does sound wrong, and I don't mean it this way, but for lack of better phrasing, I do not know how to use Groovy, and I need to build a pipeline, and I'm going to copy something or may, I, something around those lines. I do like. I the, think it's absolute. Yeah, I like the idea that Steve. Yeah, and I, I don't think that sounds bad, right? Like <laughs> I think that's how software engineers work, right? I mean, seriously, when we don't know how to do something, we find an example and we try to augment it. That's, well, but the, the problem sort of the with that is. Behavior. is I think one of the things that I, I'm going to speak for myself, I won't speak or generalize, but one of the things that I do is if I go and I copy something, I'm only using that as a vehicle of under, for understanding. So mm -hmm. I like to try to, unlike you were saying, Stephen, I personally like to try to understand what is happening with what I'm looking at or why it's doing this and how it's doing it. Because essentially I want the knowledge to build my own thing and not just take somebody's but I think that, spe that speaks to a larger problem that uh, you, the user community does not have a granular understanding of how to do certain things with a pipeline. So they copy and they don't understand and it gets them into problems. And then I think people think, oh, it's Jenkins is the problem. Right. They're, they may not want to understand. They're, they're, they, I mean, it, it may just be, oh, I got to use this to build my thing. And so I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to get a pipeline going so I can go back to coding. Yeah, but see, the thing you know, that's the happening, real coding. the part that uh, is making that difficult is because companies are especially competitors with paid products are attacking open source as Jenkins is the problem when it truly, A, they shouldn't be attacking, attacking open source, but that's their marketing arm and I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what yeah. They're, they're, they're using I, Jenkins as a crutch Really, when it's not, it's the lack of understanding on how to do something. I think I'm going to go a step further and say that, like, the vast majority of consumers of pipelines shouldn't have to understand how Jenkins works, right? That's like, a, when, you get, when you get to a specific scale, at some point, you have a centralized team that helps manage it for people. And it really becomes, how do I configure my pipeline instead of build it? Um, so there's definitely a significant portion of the community that's probably represented in one of our personas that do not need to know how Jenkins works. They need to know how to consume the pipeline and maybe uh, configure it with certain parameters or, or different libraries or whatever. Um, but I don't think our goal of this thing is to make everyone become an expert at Jenkins because most people don't have to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we also Thankfully, can define I what an expert is. 
right? What do we define as an expert? And I think that that speaks to what you're describing, Stephen, is we, for pipeline authoring, have to make it easy enough so that the persona of expert who knows how to write groovy code can consume it and the persona of expert who it just needs to be able to tweak or configure or just consume what is already there. Agree. Can, by the way, can and, we call the, the copy and paste author persona Mike? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> Okay, well, anyways. <laughs> Copy and paste persona will be known as Mike, don't worry. Okay. I'll let them know. <laughs> so I think we have a lot that we can start building. I think but, one of the key things is having the personas just to yeah. get that started. I think so, that's where we're going to have to gain a lot of understanding. I think and hmm, maybe based on the personas, but I wonder if we have like organization, organization, I don't know, the life cycle of, an, of a Jenkins org, right? Of, of a Jenkins pipeline, right? Because um, you can kind of see like people start with, okay, I, I'm just this one person, I do this pipeline. And then like Stephen was saying, they move to having a central, you know, having, having a Jenkins person that does does these things and then having it gets big enough that there's an organization that now does that, right? Um, yeah, it's really hard and, to take off my plugin maintainer hat. And like my life focuses around that large scale adoption side of things. So I'm trying to remember the first time I wrote a pipeline and what it was like when your scale was, you know, an individual app team. Um, but I, I'm usually the DevOps person supporting like 60 microservices built by different development teams across different companies. Like, so I, I sort of live in a different world than I'd say a lot of, a lot of Jenkins users end up having to. I don't know. It's it, the thing that I was, uh, where I was going with that was just that, that there's a, this is again, we're back to that on ramp where we, the, there's, there's both a front loading of that difficulty because people are like, I'm a beginner. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, okay. I got something working, copy and paste. Um, and then, we actually guide them into that scripting space that Jeff was talking about, which makes their life later on harder, right? So there's sort of a, there's a, there's, it's not just an on-ramp, but the continued, the uh, turnpike of things like that, that, that path. Um, we, we seem to lead the, the structure of Jenkins seems to lead them in, a, lead, lead our users and pipeline authors in a direction that ends up having them fall into a pit. I have a, uh, I have a document yeah, that I will yeah. share, uh, later on uh, after this meeting. I'll put it in the channel. And okay. I think what you're describing, Liam, is something that we created at Yahoo. And this was called the, uh, it's called the continuous delivery maturity model. And right. it talks about like what the culture in the organization is, it starts, it starts off like what the initial view looks like, what the managed view defined, quantitative managed, and then optimized. And then it talks about all these blocks in the life cycle of that model. So like it stops as like teams are based on platforms and technologies. The build and release is like infrequently and un unreliable manual processes. And it goes through how you get to these different steps. I'll share that document because I actually have it and it's, it, I think okay. it's part of the public domain now, but uh, I, I think that would help because it's describing very, very much what you're talking about, Liam. Okay. Yeah, and I think that, that the personas that we're gonna generate as part of this, there's some opportunity for collaboration with SIG docs, right? Like it would be fantastic if you go to the doc site and it's organized per, by persona. So, like people of different levels are directed to different levels of in-depth documentation based upon our, their, our anticipation of their needs, um, which is never going to be perfect, but might be a little bit easier than it is now. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, anything else that we, I mean, Mark, it seems like the, the personas uh, will definitely be what we'll talk about next week. Um, and then also that document uh, that would be interesting to, for me anyways, to sort of have that as a something to think about. Yeah, what I will do is uh, I will, in the notes that you have here, yeah. I will put links to them okay. in here. And then I'll make, I'll drop a note in the channel saying I have updated the meeting minutes with the links to the, uh, with the documents. I'll have that done today. Okay, cool. So, sorry, Jeff, go ahead. Well, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, sorry. All right. All right. Do we have anything else that we wanted to, I mean, I think this is a good, a good a clear thing of what we're going to work on next time for next time so that's good yeah i think this so, is really good is there a getter channel for for this group yep yep okay i, I might I already be a member <laughs> might not might or might not um do we have that in here probably not i do not see you in there jeff okay well i'll fix that it's pipeline authoring sig i might be able to invite you um and i will actually i'll do that right now i'll put that at the top um of the thing anyways i'm going to stop sharing my screen okay all right if uh if everybody has anything else we have action items most okay. of them are me and uh <laughs> and then we'll the rest of us will pick it up and start uh, and be ready to talk about it next time Sounds yeah. good. Does anybody Great. have anything else? Oh. Nope. I'm going to open a pull request to our actual SIG site, linking the meeting notes from the website. Um, Great. Great. I think that's my primary action. Cool. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right. Awesome. Have a good weekend, everybody. I'll see you next week, and I'll see you online. Thanks, all. See you guys. Bye.